Well, we went out searching for some waves. It was pretty mellow, actually. Back in 2003, Honda introduced the Element, an outdoorsy, young people-focused, and somewhat odd-looking crossover, slash SUV, slash MPV, meant to compete with the same young target audience as cars like the Pontiac Aztec and Scion XB. And just like its competitors, many owners of the Element loved its impressive versatility, even if they weren't all fans of its controversial slab-sided styling. However, many in its target audience of 20-somethings couldn't afford it, and it arrived at a time when SUVs simply weren't the must-have vehicles that they are today, leading to its cancellation by 2011. This is the story of the Honda Element. This is my old car. After a whole day of surfing, we just wanted to crash out. A new Honda Element. Go with it. So some of you may say that the Element isn't old enough to be considered for my channel, or that there's still plenty of them around. In an earlier episode, I did a review of the entire Scion brand, and although I rarely see them around where I live, I got many comments from viewers who disagreed about them being hard to find, saying they see them all the time. Pretty music. The same is probably true of the Element. I can't remember the last time I saw one, but I'm sure I'll get comments from viewers saying just the opposite. Admittedly, I was more of a fan of the Scion XB back then, in terms of style, but I see now it probably wasn't a fair comparison. Although the XB and the Element both had a boxy shape, and both tried to win over the same age group, that's where the similarities ended. The idea for the Honda Element originated in 1998, and a concept made its debut at the Detroit Auto Show in 2001. This is one of the few concept cars which, at least visually from the outside, looked almost identical to the eventual production model. Honda referred to it as the Model X, a name which wouldn't be possible today thanks to Tesla. Honda considered this name because it was intended to appeal to the Generation X age group, although the marketing, at least to me, seemed to suggest it was geared more for Generation Y, better known as Millennials. The interior design from the Model X strayed more from the later production model, but still maintained funky and edgy styling, complete with a shifter protruding from the dash. Honda stated in press releases that the boxy design was influenced by a beach lifeguard station, but also by the surfboard, hence the curved roofline. The idea for the name element as told by former Honda brand manager Charles Schneiber, came about with a bunch of Honda employees looking through books in a bookstore. Team members searched for hours through books at Barnes & Noble. Every reference book from metallurgy to animal husbandry, geology to geography, was consulted. Finally someone said, hey we need to look at the periodic table of elements. My friend said, uh, why not just element? Okay we're done here, it was perfect. So basic, yet essential for one's active lifestyle. On the outside, presumably to give it a more outdoorsy and rugged look, Honda offered the Element with lots of gray plastic panels along the lower half of the car, although oddly the plastic didn't continue across the doors, which to me kind of made the doors look more vulnerable to the Elements, no pun intended. At the time, with the plastic cladding, I couldn't help but compare it to the Pontiac Aztec, which was GM's idea of a hip and rugged outdoorsy vehicle. The Aztec debuted in 2001, initially only with gray plastic cladding, but by the time the Element debuted in 2003, the Aztec was offering body colored cladding as an option. In a desperate, but ultimately failed attempt to make the Aztec less hideous looking, Honda apparently didn't think the same disliking of the gray plastic would carry over to their car, although eventually they did. The Honda figured that even if potential buyers may be turned off by the bizarre look, once they learned what the Element could do, the bizarre look was an acceptable trade-off. Probably its most appreciated feature on the outside was the lack of any B-pillars and rear suicide doors that could be opened once the front doors were opened, creating a 55 inch wide opening on each side. Inside were seats that could recline completely flat to become a makeshift bed. You just pull a little tab down here and they fold completely flat and then you just pull it. The rear seats could be folded upwards against each wall or removed entirely and the entire interior was made of rubber and cloth that could be hosed out if needed. Even the rear door split in two to allow for a tailgate seat. Man, you sound good. It was okay. meant to look good. It was meant to hold a bunch of sh Although the Element may have looked like it was on its own unique platform, it wasn't entirely new, as it used a modified version of the second generation CRV. The Element also shared the same 2.4 liter four cylinder engine that was available in the CRV, which made 160 horsepower, made it to either a manual or automatic transmission, and had either front wheel or four wheel drive. If you got it in four wheel drive, you also got a sunroof that was located in the rear. Having the only factory sunroof option be in the rear may not make any sense, although I suspect it was moved to the rear to help transport taller items like surfboards, 
since the sunroof last was removable. Perfect, let me, oh, where's the sunroof? It's not here, there's no sunroof. Let me just reach back and, oh, I can't even reach back. To help market the element towards a younger crowd, Honda's marketing team came up with some very memorable commercials. Most notably this one, featuring Gil the Crab. I pinch. It's cool, I carry their boards, they change inside me. I want to pinch. Hey, not so close, I don't want to get pinched. Why not pinch? Because it hurts. Maybe a little pinch? You know, I've got some melted butter and some tongs in here, so... No pinch, no pinch. Gil the Crab was one of several characters that were part of the Element and Friends ad campaign. We're a tad wet. No worries. I've got this waterproof seat fabric, so make yourselves comfy back there. And since this was the first half of the 2000s, the internet was considered the place to market to young people. So Honda developed an Element and Friends website, and Gil the Crab even blogged on his own MySpace page all of which was geared to help push new trim levels and options as they were released. In its first model year of 2003, the Element managed to sell over 67,000 units, which was considered respectable at the time, since it was marketed towards a relatively small portion of the car buying public. Sales, however, dropped by a few thousand each following year. So to help improve sales, Honda tried darkening the gray plastic around the fenders and front and rear for 2005. And by 2006, a fully painted version was offered, essentially going the route that Pontiac did with the Aztec. In 2007, a higher level SC trim was offered, which offered carpeted floors, presumably as an attempt to bring the Element more into the mainstream. Yet despite Honda's attempt to push the Element to Gen X and Y, the unfortunate fact was that many car buyers in that age group simply couldn't afford it. In its first model year of 2003, the cheapest trim offering, the DX with a manual transmission, had an MSRP of $17,500. They may sound like a bargain, but adjusting for inflation, that's close to $28,000 today. Potential buyers in the 20s weren't all able to be approved for a loan that size. To keep the price down to that level, the DX came standard without air conditioning and a stereo, and sold so poorly that by 2005, the DX trim was dropped. You have the uh, real-time four-wheel drive, no? No, I, I do have real-time four-wheel drive. That is what I said, no? Well... No, you said I had real-time four-wheel drive, but then you said no at the end. Such is a French tongue, oui? Well, I've never been to Paris, France, but I'll take your word for it. After all, you are a penguin who is French. Eh oui, I am a French penguin. No. So how did they still manage over 67,000 buyers in 2003? Likely because two-thirds of those buyers were over 35 years old. Essentially the same thing that happened to the Cyan XB. It unexpectedly attracted an older clientele, who were willing to look past the supposedly young and hip styling in exchange for versatility that few other SUVs could match. Some of those older buyers were dog owners who loved the element for how easy it was for them to bring their dogs along in the car. So much so that the website dogcars.com awarded the element their dog car of the year in 2007. This led to Honda offering accessories by 2009 that made it easier to secure dogs in the cargo area, even offering ramps to help them walk in and out. Despite the refresh done in 2007, the Element suffered from the same problem that every other car or truck like it suffered. Its polarizing design made it difficult to change without potentially turning away its core audience. Toyota tried this with the Scion XB by introducing a second generation that was significantly changed from the first. The second gen had a more mainstream design which Toyota clearly did to boost sales and bring in customers that wouldn't have bought the first gen. But it also turned away buyers who liked the look of the first gen. In fact, the XB is one of the few cars of the era that started out with a design that was purposely not mainstream, was purposely polarizing, and still managed a second generation. Looking back at cars like the Chrysler PT Cruiser, the Chevy SSR, the Chevy HHR, and of course the Plymouth Prowler, all were destined to never have a second generation, even if their sales had managed to justify the money and effort to do so, simply because doing so would create a much different car. The Element would simply have been unable to evolve into a second generation without losing its identity. For the 2010 model year, seven years into its production run, sales numbers had dropped to just over 14,000. Honda CRV, whose platform the Element was originally based on, was quickly gaining more and more sales, topping over 200,000 in that same year. Considering that the CRV would carry one additional passenger and had better fuel economy, it is very likely that the Element lost potential buyers to the CRV. The Element and Friends ad campaign, while itself being very popular, couldn't translate that popularity into more sales. By the end of its last model year of 2011, Honda sold a total of around 325,000 Elements. That may sound like a decent number, 
until you consider the CRV sold way more than that just during the Element's last two years. And its competition, the Toyota RAV4, sold over 325,000 in just three years during that same time frame. Despite the Element being discontinued in 2011, the Element has become somewhat of a cult classic in the last few years. As I noted earlier, I may never see these cars anymore, but I suspect in parts of the country where such a vehicle makes a lot more sense, like at the beach or at campsites, there are still many on the road. And aftermarket companies have improved on one of the Element's biggest shortcomings, its relatively low ride height, by offering lift kits on the four-wheel drive models. These kits still only allow the Element to have moderate rock climbing duties, as the car was never designed for it, and you'll end up with worse fuel economy and a rougher ride. But chances are, if you really want to lift your Element, those drawbacks are worth it, especially since it's likely a lot cheaper to do that than in many other cars. Add to that the overall reliability of the Element, considering it's a Honda. There are many Element owners who have managed to make it to over 200,000 miles, a few even over 300,000. Repairs are made easier considering it shared some parts with the 1.5 million CRVs that sold during the Element's lifetime. Back in 2020, there were rumors that Honda may bring back the Element as a new model. But as of the recording of this episode in July 2022, that hasn't happened. Although considering the SUV craze is still in full force, I wouldn't rule out the Element coming back someday. In fact, this car was designed there and specifically for 22-year-old American men who have left college but don't have jobs. You do wish they could be a bit more specific about this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Oh, it smells so bad in here! If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Did he get lost? He may be rolling down a cliff right now.